What's up my dirty little babies? Today we are in Tampa, Florida. We came to visit our good friend Ben Popolski. He is known for being a professional bodybuilder. He's been in the industry for about 12 years. He's one of the pioneers and OGs in online coaching and education. You know, he's been in the industry forever and he's an accomplished athlete. So today we're here picking his brain about all things hypertrophy. I know I talk a lot about strength in my channel and not enough about, hi about hypertrophy, which is what truly matters, right? People only wanna look better naked. That's the most important thing. So that's what we're here for. We're here to learn how to look better, how to feel better. Ben, how are you? Amazing. I'm always good. Ben was on my music. He's like, hey, what do you what do you want to listen to? And I I'm like, she was gonna ask me a slow dance between sets, but <laughs> how about some Bon Jovi? And he's like, uh. <laughs> so what do you listen Stuff to? Stuff goes through phases though, because like last month it was Shwayze. Yeah. He just only listened to Shwayze for like yeah. a whole month. Yeah. Now it's Bon Jovi. During your workout. Yeah. I mean, look, it's not like I'm training really hard right now. If I'm training really hard, I listen to Metallica, um, Iron Maiden. ACDC. So you laugh at me, but I'm making fun of you for, for similar reasons. So when I was competing, and even before I started competing when I was in university, my challenge in workouts was not getting pumped up, it was getting too pumped up. So I would listen to classical music, and that was the only thing that could keep me level headed, because otherwise I would get so amped up, I would get aggressive and pissed off and want to beat people up rather than, than <laughs> train. It's true. So I learned, learned classical music, and I, I learned to not like anything with lyrics. Because lyrics, you start like singing it and like feeling people's emotions. I don't want anyone else's emotions. Oh, yeah, I want to I wanna, like have my own dialogue. Wait, did you so warm up, I just want to watch you do it. I've heard you style. It, it'll move itself. So what I'll do in a situation like this, I never trained it with her, right? just like giving her an immovable object to push into, because it's obviously very light. What we're trying to get her to do is use the most hamstring possible at the bottom. Now your goal, Steph, isn't to beat me. Your, your goal is to ramp up contraction of the hamstring. Yeah. So obviously when you're using 30 pounds, your brain's only gonna use 30 pounds of force. So we're gonna try to give her an immovable object so you're creating an isometric in that position. You can keep that so the pelvis doesn't move right there. Good. See how that changes it? Stop, what's up? So as you're curling up, your pelvis wants to go up, right? Because you're used to using power. So we're going to get rid of that, put you into a shorter position. So we'll play with that a little bit. Look how much I'm sweating already. <laughs> what is it? Look how much I'm sweating already. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's going to be a long session. I mean, you, you're, if I see any movement at this end, I know this end is lengthening, right? So this end is shortening, this end is lengthening. So I want to get him to prevent that movement. So come up on your forearms, Hayden. So we're putting him into a slightly more extended position. So you're going to brace everything from the top of the pelvis up. So we're going to brace the abdominals in. So you're kind of like pulling your, your balls up into your stomach. Pull your lats down, so you engage, you engage the lats from the top. So everything from the top of the pelvis is braced. So all the movement's happening below. Good, now see, do that again. Hold the position where you are right now, like push this down into the pad a little bit, and try not to let this move. So his glutes are just a little engaged. Watch as he comes up. So the glutes loosen up, he's relaxing. That's so hard. Yeah, it's just different. Because the power of you probably default to this, right? So if we can, if we can make this your default, now it's a more neutral pelvis, so you're less likely to run into hip problems and more back problems. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is, just training that like slight posterior pelvic tilt. Mm -hmm. So uh, like super braced here. Push this down, like I want to decrease that space in the period. Yeah, Lauren Park does that. And then I went to school at Ryerson. So be hyper aware of what's happening here. This is going to do what it needs to do on its own if you're hyper aware happens here. Good. Come to the bottom. Stop and don't put the weight down. Just super slow in control, just be really attentive to what's happening inside of your body. Really pull this up and in, pull this up and in. There you go, right there, yep. So it's up and in without, I want to keep your hips down, but I want to pull the abdominals up and in. Down, check, good, down. Go again, up. Up. Stop, hips down, good. Oh. How's that feeling in your lower back? Good. Okay, so as soon as you get to here, it's going to start to hurt your lower back. So make sure you're always, yeah. It's not necessarily a crunch, it's just more like a, you know, this idea of a column, right? I don't want to be in an uh, anterior pelvic tilt, I want to be here, neutral. Now, this is just the worm. Put your ball to your stomach.
<laughs> Look, bodybuilding for powerlifters is three sets. Like if you do three sets, Next. that's it. Three sets of ten. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, don't move. Don't only pull you down. Don't only pull you down. Good. Back up. Go. Hips down. Hips down. Stay there. Don't move. Don't only pull you down. Come on. Two more. Strong. Come on. Really sit Pull. Hips down. Stay there. Don't move. Abs tight. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. One more. Come on. Up. Hold. Hold it right there. Good. You said five. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give you something to focus on. How's it feeling? No. <laughs> Get down on the film. <laughs> the one person in the world I think would never ask that question. <laughs> hey, I'm leaving my ego at the door, you know what I mean? You what? I'm leaving my no. ego at the door. <laughs> Hold. Check it, check it, put this down, put this down, good. It's up, stay. What the hell? Okay, like I couldn't tell, like I said, I couldn't tell if it was your glute hypersphere or if you're actually in one. No, no, he's actually in here tilted. Yeah. He had spawn me, he broke his back. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was years ago though. Um, so you're going like thoracic extension. Good, so try to maintain that. <laughs> <laughs> And there's so many things to remember. Same, bro. There's so many things to remember. Yeah, for sure. The big ones, man, are going to be your pelvic floor, like pulling your balls up in your stomach and driving your hips down to the back. So his ability, Steph, to produce force here is huge. Go ahead. So his length and position is great. We get him in the short position, he can't even use that little bit of weight. So the differential is a big thing. That's why his pelvis is weak. Or, I don't know if it's why his pelvis is weak, but it's indi indi indicating that his pelvis yeah. is weak. My back, because I was doing everything that everyone told me to do. As soon as I actually use my brain, it's like, it's everything else. Um, yeah, back for sure would be the answer. But not because it was hard, it's just because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. For him, it's literally legs. You can't put your legs. Huh? <laughs> for you, it's literally your legs. Yeah. Well, your spine's going to be a limiting factor, right? So squatting wouldn't be the best option for you. Because your spine's always going to be the bottom. Yeah. So the way you look at it is like, if I want to train my legs, I need my legs to be the thing that breaks. The thing that fatigues first. If something else fatigues, it's not your legs. So if you're trying to load your spine, your spine's going to fatigue first. Your nervous system will shut down. So you'll never build them. So, so put it on a leg. Quad extension. Hack squat would be your best bet. Hack squat, yeah. Right, because that stabilizes it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the benefit of hack over a leg press is leg press just limits the range. If I start here, now my range is that. Whereas if I start here, now I can get exponentially more range. What do you normally do for legs? Have you done like a first week training all or no? No, not really at all. Literally what I'm she said, blessed. like we'll squat and then do, you're just blessed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we squat. I'm blessed by the meat do, rocket gods. Yeah, three by ten on the <laughs> quad extension. Stop at the top. Go back to the top. Pull your big toe up off the pad. I don't want you to be able to squash that. Both sides. Go. Always pulling your pelvic floor up and use them. Big toe, big toe, big toe. Two more. Right up. Big toe, lower back, big toe, lower back. Good. Ugh. Jesus. How's your internal and external rotation hip? My left leg. Why not both your feet? I also noticed your feet were a lot closer. Well, that's so, comfortable, man. Like, I'm not attached to it. Wherever works for your hip position. So, 
What are feels comfortable with you? I feel like, I mean, I can go close, and feel, I feel like I feel more in my quads when I do that. Okay, so there's no benefit to going more narrow for your quads, except if, okay. yeah, there's no, that, that's a, it's just an yeah. error. If you can go narrow and keep your lower back against the pad, you're fine. So here's how I would assess this. I would literally just stand up, hold something, and go, well, if, I'm in, if I'm in this position, so I'll do it facing you. If I'm in this position, I can get just past 90. Okay. If I go here, I can get to 120. Right, so maybe I get, like, see where you can get as far as hip flexion without letting your lower back stretch around. Okay, so you've got great hip mobility in that plane. So, right, so you can go on this frontal plane. Okay. Fair enough, frontal plane, sorry, sagittal. So if that range is available to you in a narrow stance, is it preferable or is it nothing? No, so, so the way I look at it is, is if you were to forget about what's happening on the outside and what's happening on the inside, I'm looking at the joint. So my only goal for this exercise is to take the knee foot through the full excursion. So I just don't want the hip to interfere with that. Right? So right. if I can only go to here on my knee, chances are, sorry, on my hip, chances are my knee's not going to go as far as it wants. Whereas if I go here, now my knee can go further. Does that make sense? When I go chair below, it often ends up... as hard as you can before you move. Charge speed, yes. Yes. Ooh. Two more. Strong. Jump. Let's go. Jump. Yeah, come on. Strong. Right down. You have to do more than two sets again, aren't you? Just ready, like, fuck, I'm doing cardio. I need a post-workout shake. <laughs> you like eight reps on that set. It's <laughs> too soon. Uh, is there a rep range you're looking for? Yes. It's warming up, man. Eight set. Warming up. Warming up, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I think I'm warm. Yeah, I genuinely think bodybuilding is harder than powerlifting. Yeah, well, well, it depends what you're good at, right? It's harder for you because you've trained a very specific way your whole life, and maybe that way appealed more no, to no, you. No, no, I mean, objectively, I think bodybuilding is harder. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. Because <laughs> the diet portion of it sucks yeah. so, just so much. And so like, does the training. It's like training with no glory. Yeah. Imagine for powerlifting, you're cutting for 24 hours for a meet. Brutal. Mm -hmm. Imagine cutting for eight weeks, like or half weeks. a year. Yeah. <sighs> the diet component, I think, just makes it so much more difficult. Yeah. Yo, he's cheating. No, I'm not. How dare you? Look how fast he's going. Ben was going fast. You're not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Zero reps there. Just pay attention to how your foot hits the ground. You can make that first inch really, really hard. So let's go super slow. Don't stop. Drive up. Don't move in. Drive up. Good. Now go slow. There you go. Keep going. You got it. Let's go. Strong. First inch is going to be most important. Keep sharp from the bottom. Keep going strong. Drive. Push. Drive. Love it. <laughs> Fucking powerlifters. Just the wrong day not to wear shorts. I know. You did an upper body out there.
Yeah. So you gotta cover the upper body you know, on leg day. Yeah. Unless because all the, all the blood is being taken from everywhere, put into your legs, you look small in your upper body. Unless you're me, then I always look big. No matter what, no matter when, no matter how, you know what I'm saying? I'd flex, but I don't want to rip this shirt, it's my favorite one. <laughs> One thing conceptually that makes the way that I train different is as I was saying to Hayden, this conscious attempt to as I squat not just let myself fall, but use my hip flexors and my hamstrings to consciously pull me down. So I come in here, hip flexors are already pulling, I hear the hamstrings are pulling and I'm like this loaded spring. You get it from a powerlifting perspective. Yeah. So that's the success of induction. Yeah, so that's how a lunge should feel. And if you're doing a walking lunge, it's you know uh, hip flexor and hamstring, but if you're doing a stationary lunge, you can also add in this this component of taking this foot and pushing it in that direction, taking this foot and pushing it in that direction, so you're trying to split the floor. So I get to here, and I'm literally using this back foot to create more resistance to this front foot. So I'm going to get into this position, I'm shoving. Okay, so I'm intentionally like creating more force. Obviously when you add weight, it changes. But as you're just doing body weight stuff, it's a really easy way to increase load, like at home training type stuff. So try that and see the look. So that was, that was pushing away on the Yeah, way so down. right there, don't move. Two, yeah, keep your knees bent. Stop right there. Now just spread the floor. So one goes forward, one goes back aggressively. Now slowly, use your hip, your hamstring, your hip pressure to pull you down. Keep the weight all in the front leg. Yeah, keep all the weight in the front leg. Because those can continue to push back with that leg. Now it comes straight up like you're in a tube, no going back. Yeah. And stay over it. Yeah. Come down as well as you can actually. Create tension by pushing forward, like you're trying to push my foot out of the way. And push through it. So I mean you can use that for balance. I mean not not using your hand isn't a victory. Use that. Just kind of use to pull yourself up. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. You make quad games, bro. Oh shit. <laughs> See that? Look at that. Oh, I'm gonna do a show. <laughs> oh, you wanna talk about glutes. So you know this, but I'm going to say it to you anyway. We talked about it in class. Distance. Two things that are going to be the differentiating factor. Strength in the, in the extremes of the range and distance. So the extremes of the range like glute bridges and, and I think the best thing to, to really engage the glute from that lengthened position is, is uh, single leg deadlift. You ever do like a single leg on a Smith machine? Let's do that. It's really a challenge at length and position. So come to the bottom and stop. I know there's no weight just come to the bottom and stop. Keep this leg straighter. You drop the hip down a little bit, take this leg back straighter. It's really, push through that floor, don't move yet, don't move yet. Push that to the floor as hard as you can, squeeze that glute as hard as you can. Now use that to contract. Yeah. So two second engage contraction, they can isometric through the floor before you go. And instead of just standing up, think about pulling this into a posterior pelvic tilt. Heavy as possible, so I need to contract as hard as possible. Same mentality, it's directed in a different place. I like that. Yeah. Yep. And obviously, resistance matters, but. So spine is rigid, lower leg is rigid, the only thing that's moving is that glute. So super tight, get to the bottom and don't move. Stop, that's it, let's run up. Cut, go sit there. We're taking this back, go find the hip flexor, stop right there, don't move. Drive this into the ground as hard as you can. You need to create as much force through the ground with that heel, bend the knee a little bit. Good, now, you can track that heart. There you go. I don't think you need any help. But... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit different from what we've been doing. Um, it's a learning experience for me always to do, you know, stuff outside of my comfort zone. Real hypertrophy training coming from from a professional bodybuilder is completely different to the way that I'm accustomed to training, and it's it's honestly it's it's such a huge challenge for me because, like I was telling you guys, it's like for me, three sets of ten is bodybuilding. But obviously, for them, three sets of 10 is literally the warm-up 
to a particular exercise. It's like not even the warm up. Yeah, Ben, be, before Ben left, he just left. He goes. You're welcome to keep going, keep training. Cause you didn't really do much. Huh? We did so much. Just <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, you know, you guys didn't really train, so if you want to stay here and, and actually get a training in, and I'm like, wait, what? That's our that was, volume for the week. Yeah, that was more volume that I've done since 08. Pretty much. Um, well, if you enjoyed this video, but first of all, if you have any questions, drop it down below in the comments. If you want to get in touch with Ben, if you're interested in, in his seminars, in his education material, you can find all of his stuff over at muscleintelligence.com. Muscle I believe. We'll put the link below. Yeah, anyway. okay. We'll find it. You can find him at, what's his Instagram? Feedback? Ben Popolski? Feedback or something. Yeah, okay. We'll pop it up here. Caesar, you're in charge of that. Right there. And yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed this video, maybe hit the like button. If you really, really like this video, then maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you really, 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 really like this video, then head over to our website, hybridperformancemethod.com, snag a training program, snag a nutrition program, snag a hybrid t-shirt, the best in the game most artsy in the game most of, you, you know if you wear hybrid apparel it you know what that says about you it's a statement it's a statement it's you're committed you know you're dedicated you, you know your way around the gym yeah you you know where you're at you know what you need to do you, you you're a focused person right so make that statement yeah you walk into an alley fitness and people will see you in a shirt like this mm -hmm. and think, oh damn that's one of those hybrid people yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah he knows what he's doing she knows, she knows what he's doing. so anyway i mean hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you guys next time see ya bye